and hello fellow aviators, the Rev Summer here. Welcome to this next live flight, Monday night flight between San Francisco, California and Mammoth Lakes, Yosemite in California. Let's go ahead, hop on into the cockpit, get everything fired up and we'll get this flight underway. So glad you all are here joining me this evening. Excited about this flight. It's going to be some beautiful scenery we're going to have today. And I hope you all enjoy it as much as I think we will. Captain Matt, hey, welcome aboard. Glad you're here for our stream this evening. Let's go ahead and get the power on the aircraft. We'll check our circuit breakers really quickly here at the back of the cockpit. And uh, as always here in the sim, they are in. So we'll hop into the captain's seat, lift up our armrest. And make sure we have the ADG handle stowed. Um, IRS switches are in off. Radars are showing off. Flaps at zero. Thrust levers are at shut off. Flight spoilers zero. Thrust reversers off. Hydraulics are all off. Let's go ahead and turn the battery master on. And we do have AC power available. So I'll go ahead and flip us over to that AC page. Looks like it's good. Let's uh, go ahead and connect it. And we can see AC power is on all the AC buses. The DC side's looking good too. Great. All right, so we'll just come on down here, get our nav light on. That's all we'll need today uh, in the daylight hours. And I'll get hydraulic pumps all on so we can turn the stab trim on. Channel one, channel two. And there's our spoiler stab and test advisory message on ED2. And I'll flip the IRS, well, not the parking brake, we'll leave that on. I'll flip the IRS switches to nav. All right. Yeah, let's get that init going, because you know that takes a little while. So it should time out pretty well with us doing the uh, initialization and programming in the FMS. All right, cool. So that's all in there. I'm going to go ahead and put uh, San Francisco to Mammoth Lakes and our flight number we are Sky West 5976 so I'll get that in there and we'll be good to go Captain Shaquille Oatmeal you're so ready for this trip great I'm glad you're here glad you're ready and Captain Matt you've been on this flight in real life but in a TBM 930 well I bet that was a pretty trip Captain Matt that uh, I've, I've done this flight on x-plane 11 and it was pretty on x-plane 11 so i can't even imagine how pretty it would be in in real life all right so we have everything firing up i'm going to go ahead and grab the atis at uh, san francisco let's uh i'll pull up navigraph charts let's see what that atis frequency is together really quickly and looking at let me move this out of the way i have a pushback express window that's open uh, A's frequency is going to be 118.85. So let's go ahead and tune that in. So we'll get our ATIS and then we'll grab our clearance from San Francisco clearance to 118.85. I'll punch that in here to COM2 and switch this over 118.85. There we go. San Francisco International Airport. ATIS Information Alpha. 0256 Zulu. Wind 29 or 0 at 11. Visibility 10. Sky condition. Clear. Temperature 12. 2.6. Altimeter 29 or 9 or 3. Arriving runways 28 right. 28 left. Departing runways right. 1 left. Visual approaches in use. VFR departures contact clearance delivery. Advise on course heading. Altitude. It's interesting. American Airlines 74 over there. Read back all runway assignments and have short instructions. Advise on initial contact. You have information alpha. All right. San Francisco International Airlines. So I'll switch that back over. I'm actually going to put in 121.50. One JJ Hofflin, new subscriber. Welcome to the channel. Glad you subscribed. Thank you so much, JJ Hofflin. All right, 121.50, we'll have that over here uh, active in COM1 so we can monitor, guard, and then our delivery frequency. We're on pilot edge, so we're going to be using the actual frequencies here. 
So let's uh, let me pull that that Navigraph chart again so we can make sure we're using the right frequency. Um, looks like it's 118.2 up here. So let's go ahead and tune that into COM1, get our clearance, and then we'll go ahead and get the everything program. All right, there's PacX. PacX has this going. I want to close out that fuel panel because we'll uh, we'll do that ourselves here in a bit. All right, so 118.2. Captain Matt, you have liked the stream. Thank you so much for the like. I really appreciate that. Really appreciate it. And Captain Oatmeal, the 748 in the Chrome. Yeah, that's really cool. <laughs> it's uh, nifty. Cool for, cool to see that. All right, 118.2 here. Let me give uh, Clearance a call, and um, we'll see what they say. San Francisco Clearance. Skywest 5976 to Mammoth Hot Springs with Alpha. And hopefully it's working. Let's go 5976, San Francisco Clearance, clear to the Mammoth Airport, truck and two departure, Sierra transition, then is filed. Columbia City up maintained 10,000, departure frequency 135.1, squawk 7224. Skies 5976, clear to Mammoth Hot Springs, truck and two departures here, transition as filed. Clavia Sid, except maintain 10,000, departure 135.1, squawk 7224. Skywest 5976, read back, correct? All right, so there we go. So that's actually a little different than how we had filed. We had filed ourselves on the night three departure. So good thing we called up and got our clearance before we started programming all that stuff in there. So let's head on down here to our FMS and get everything programmed in. First thing, let's go ahead and get that squat code in before we forget. So it's 7224. So I'll put that in ATC1. I'm actually going to put that in both of these just to make sure we don't um, mess that up. And 10,000 feet was our initial altitude. We already have that set. So great. Um, let's go on down to our FMS now. Um, well, before we do that, I should finish the receive and check stuff. So we need to arm the emergency lights. We have the seatbelt signs on. And um, so we're good to go there. All right, now let's continue. So I'm going back to the index page. We'll start here at the first thing, status. Make sure our database matches on both the first officers and the captain's FMS, which it does. We already did the pause and knit, so that's good. And for our flight plan, we're going to be going via the, I think it's going to be runway one left, and the, it's the truck and two. Hopefully this transition will work. He said the Sierra transition. So let me, I'm not seeing that in here right now. Handler 2.0, yo, 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 you have received a subscriber kind sire. Thank you so much, Handler 2.0. Glad to have you here. All right, so I've got to pull up this uh, d departure on my uh, Navigraph plates here. So give me one second because I do not see that transition listed. And uh, there are a few problems at times with the the database. This is the Navigraph, kind of a beta database. It's in Flight Sim 2.0. So, very cool. All right, so the Sierra transition. Yeah, it is. Here, let me pull it up for you all so you can see what we're looking at here. So it's definitely a part of the actual departure let me unpin the night three since we're not doing that and let's pull it up here sid it's the truck and two and look so we're going to the sierra transition out there and when you're when we're looking through the fixes it didn't have sierra listed so i guess we're just gonna have to probably um build it as a custom fix here so let's go ahead and do that we'll get it set up and that happens every now and then with this uh, beta version of the Navigraph database. So, yeah, it's definitely not listed in there. So I'm just going to do the trucking to one left. And then, so trucking, it's going to be Cos 
Cosmic, C O S M C. That's a cool, that's a cool fixed name. Aviator J T. Hello, hello. Glad to have you here. Glad to have you here. All right, Cosmic. Put that on, and then uh, let's see. After Cosmic, it's direct to Sarah, or S Sarah. I'm just gonna say Sarah, like the like the name Sarah, I guess. But uh, S A R A H. Okay, cool. Well, hopefully we'll get that fixed in a in a later update of this. Okay, so then after that it's as filed, which um, is going to be direct Roberts. So I'm going to do a little bit of custom building for this today, and then after Roberts it's direct to the Mammoth Hot Springs Airport. So we'll execute that. Very good. And flight plan distance is showing 181 in the FMS. We're planned at 216, so that is realistic distance. So we don't have anything crazy going on. No alternate today. Beautiful weather in Mammoth Hot Springs. Just really windy. Like winds gusting up toward 30 knots. So it should be a lot of fun. Um, all right. Move on to the Perfect Knit page. And we're going up to flight level 330 today. So we're going to rock it up there in this CRJ 550. And let me go ahead and load all of our uh, performance numbers here in the EFB. So I usually use this change to zero fuel weight. And our zero fuel weight is planned at 53, 628. So I'll use these double arrows to get up 1,000 pounds per click. And then uh, we'll go to 53, 660. That's pretty close. Plant fuel is 5690. So let's roll this back down to... Uh, I'll take more fuel than less, so 57.62. That looks good. Trim's going to be 5.7, so I'll go ahead and get that set for the stab trim. Make sure we uh, definitely don't want to mess up your trim settings for takeoff. It is not fun. All right. Very cool. So that's uh, the Perfinite page one. So then on the second page, this is where we look at the temperature deviation from the standard atmosphere so on the all right flight test said we're ready to roll so that's good to hear so as soon as we can get everything programmed in we'll get out of here so it's plus one today and then the wind component I only get the cruise wind component we have a tailwind so that's nice so p18 for plus 18 and then I do not have the others listed on the sim brief release reserve fuel is going to be 2,000 pounds today and our taxi fuel is planned at 500 pounds. So I'll put that in, and we're set on the perfect net. Move on down to the radio page, make sure their nav one and nav two are in auto tune. Uh, on the perf menu page, advisor v navs enabled, fuel management's predicted. And this is how I like to set up my displays. So v nav on the flying pilot side, which is going to be the captain today. And then uh, long range nav position so we can monitor the IRS positions, make sure they're not drifting too much. That's a bigger deal on a long flight, but this will be a pretty short flight today. But just I just get in the habit of doing that. On the non-flying pilot side on the right side, we just put the window to on. And uh, typically it'll show you the, the fuel. I'm not sure why uh, it's not showing distance and fuel numbers for Mammoth Hot Springs. Maybe it doesn't like me throwing it at the bottom of the legs page, but... Uh, I'll, I'll have to play around with that later because I know we do put it at the bottom of the legs page in a uh, real CRJ, but um, that's all right. Handler, you ate something called Captain Benjamin's and it was a seafood buffet. That sounds that sounds delicious. What sort of seafood did you have? What was the best thing at Captain Benjamin's? All right, so we have all that set. And on the index page, VOR DME control, just make sure you don't have any uh, nav aids inhibited. And if there are some listed in the NOTAMs that aren't working, you punch them in here. But I'm not showing any today. So we're good with that. Let's go ahead and do a quick uh, flow through the cockpit, make sure we have everything set. So our lighting's looking good. Nozzle steering's uh, off for now. And we're not going, we're going to pretend like the uh, aircraft has already flown today. That'll save us some of the extensive first flight checks. Um, so we're going to be flap safe for takeoff. It's a dry runway. I'm going to set all these V speeds, which they're in there. We'll verify them in a minute with our briefing. 
And uh, altimeter setting, like we heard on the ATIS, it's 299 or 3 today. So I'll set that, uh, check that it does go to 299 or 2 there. And we'll leave DH and MDA um, off for today. And radar is off, we're in white needles. Come up here to the overhead panel, check all of our electrics, everything looks good. Do a quick fire detection test before we start up the APU. Fire bottle and push fire push button are good and we saw the fire assist okay enunciated on the advisory messages so move down here I'm gonna go ahead and put hydraulics into auto and on let's check the hydraulic quantities make sure that they are in the green which they are perfect they're above 45 percent and let's turn on the APU so let the power fuel switch get the APU in bite message status message and it's going to go out and then uh, start stop switch. There we go. And it's just habit for me. Whenever I start the APU, I start a timer. But uh, we'll, we'll turn that on. All right. Mix, Mix Simmon. Hello. Just got sent over from Shaq. Si thank you so much. I appreciate uh, you all coming and join. Part of the part of the Captain Oatmeal family. So. Uh, so nice to have you over here. Thank you so much, Captain Shaquille Oatmeal. I appreciate you you all joining us here today. All right, so we have the APU firing up. APU start light went out about 60%. And then at 99% on the RPM, plus about oh, four seconds, we'll get the green avail light on, and the APU should start powering everything. Uh, fuel pumps are going to be off for now. Bleed valves are all in auto, as they should be. We need to set the cabin pressure. That's a big deal here. So what's crazy, we're here at sea level, right, in uh, San Francisco. But Mammoth Hot Springs is at a whopping 7,135 feet. So you would not want to forget to set your pressurization here. So let's go ahead and uh, start that process. I'm actually hitting right alt and maximizing the screen on my end. And then I hold down shift when I'm doing the cabin pressure knob and it helps you to make it go a little bit faster. It's still going to take a little while. But I'll try to keep reading the messages while I'm rolling this pressurization knob up. But obviously a 7,000 foot difference, that's uh, that's pretty substantial. We need to make sure we have our pressurization set. All right. Oh. Said some sort of a message down there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna focus on one thing at a time here. Let's see, 7,135, and we are set. I'm at 7,140 now. So let me, and I think I can show you all at home there. See, 7,140. So we're good on the pressurization. Let's continue our flow down the overhead panel now. Obviously, it's important to do this stuff. You could have some crazy things happen otherwise. We'll go ahead and turn on the packs. Get the recirc fan on, get a little extra airflow in the back. Airflow is always a nice thing when you're flying, especially if you're a passenger. Get the windshield heats, probe heats on. And come here, just look at the glare shield, make sure everything looks good. Standby instruments look good. Oxygen quantity is good. Any skid is armed. And I'll come down here. We need to arm our thrust reversers. That's something you don't want to forget to do in the CRJ, especially if you're going to be rejecting your takeoff. You really like to have those. And uh, we'll go to TCAS. I like uh, relative mode, auto, relative, and then norm. And I'll set it also on the first officer's side, so just so that it's uh, consistent. So there we go. Auto, relative, and norm. Hit the return button. It's already been tested today. And radars are off. The uh, standby radio tuning unit's on. Stab trim's already on. Mock trim, we'll turn that on. Display and avionics fan are in normal. All the source selectors are in normal. Turn on the yaw damper. I'm just going to make sure that it will uh, disconnect really quickly. We'll hit that center button right there. That'll disconnect it. There we go. Put that back on. And then let's just check that our trim's working. Mick Sima, do you fly the CRJ on the line today? So I do not currently fly the CRJ, but I spent uh, about 10 years flying CRJs. 
Um, the 200, 700, and the 900. Most of my time was on the 200, but spent quite a few years on the CRJ 700 in particular. All right. So we saw that the stab trim's working. Let's check the rudder trim really quickly. I have that bound. And then the aileron trim also. This one's a little trickier. I'm just going to one, two. I just hold it down for two seconds, make sure it went that way. And let's hold down two seconds the other way. It should be back right where it was. So one, two. There we go. Obviously, in real life, that's so much easier. You just hold down the switch and watch it on the um, screen. All right, so uh, looks like everything's good. Once again, the thrust levers are in shut off, and uh, we'll go ahead and put the first officer's FMS onto the legs page. Oh, the warden streamlabs on you already. Right. Yeah, don't don't worry about it, man. It's all right. I just uh, have that bot enabled, so you're not offending me. You're not offending me. Yeah, McSimmon, absolutely. It's it's uh, a pleasure to do so. I love this aircraft, and um, I'm so happy that our flight sim community can enjoy it now in a beautiful simulator like Microsoft Flight Sim. All right, so let's go ahead. I'm going to run through some checklists. And for those of you who are new, I have a, um, a tutorial series playlist that's on my channel, and I have um, just a general normal checklist I put together that's um, based on some real world procedures in the CRJ. Obviously I couldn't put every single detail in there because there's some stuff that you're not allowed to share with everybody. Uh, but I shared what I could with you all, but that I'm gonna use those that normal checklist today for our flight. Uh, so we already did the uh, power up check, circuit breakers were checked, the radars were off, thrust servers were shut off, battery masters were on, AC electrics were set, hydraulic and stab trim switches were engaged and tested. And the IRSs are nav now. Park and brake is on. So the power check is complete. Receiving check. Documents checked. Maintenance status checked. Emergency equipment. That's all back here. Not as big a deal in this sim, but obviously in real life, you really want to check your uh, emergency equipment because if you need it, you certainly want it to be there and working. Uh, emergency lights are armed. Standby instruments are checked. The gear pins checked. Receiving check complete. And we are... We don't have to do the first flight check, so we'll move on to before start. And before we do the before start, I need to do our quick departure briefing. That, and everyone that's watching, um, I always say this, but it's so true. Each of you is a part of the flight crew today. So if you see anything that's out of place, uh, please don't hesitate to speak up. You're not going to offend me. Um, rather, uh, us avoid a catastrophe. So please speak up if you see anything out that seems out of place or weird. Or if you have questions, yeah, just ask and we can talk through it. So the departure briefing will help us to have a shared mental model of what we're planning to do on the flight. So first thing we'll do, um, go through airplane details, weights and fuel. So our planned fuel today is 5,690 and we have 5,730 on board. Min fuel for takeoff will be 5,190. The... Um, we already had the zero fuel weight set. Takeoff weight is going to be 59,000 pounds, so that's uh, legal, well below the max takeoff weight. For our uh, ATIS weather here, Alpha is current at San Francisco. Winds are 290 at 11. I think we'll be taking off one left. And clear skies, BMC conditions, altimeters are 299 or 3, and they're set across the board here, 2993. In Mammoth Lakes, Yosemite, beautiful day, but it is extremely windy uh, from what I saw earlier. Let's see if it's calmed down at all. I'm pulling up the ATIS on my SIM brief release here. Or not the ATIS, but the, uh, the Terminal Aerodrome forecast, the TAF. And forecast when we get there is for winds 270, 14 gust into 25, plus 6 miles, clear skies. So uh, a little a little blustery. It's calmed down a little bit from what I saw earlier today. And no dotums that should affect us this evening in Pilot Edge. Uh, for our taxi out route, let me pull up our Navigraph charts really quickly so we can look through that together. So we are parked right here at Gate Fox Track One, and so after we push. So after we push, we'll likely um, look to exit at spot 20 right there. So I'll call up ground. You don't have to call for push on pilot edge. So I'll call up ground at spot 20. 
and more than likely they're going to give us Alpha and Mike 1 to runway 1 left. We do have a hot spot right here. It's hot spot number 1. And if we come over here to the runway incursion hot spots, complex intersections in close proximity of runways, pilots taxiing eastbound on Bravo sometimes turn on Foxtrot instead of continuing the turn on Bravo. But just a lot of taxiways. We just need to stay on this inside one at Alpha and not start making any crazy turns if we can help it, unless the air traffic control tells us to do so. So that's our taxi plan. Runway 1 left, 7,650 feet of runway, plenty of runway. Uh, runway heading of 014 that we'll verify when we line up with the runway. And for our takeoff, if we have a problem below 80 knots, we'll abort the takeoff for a variety of reasons. Above 80 knots, we're only going to reject the takeoff for either an engine fire failure or the inability of the aircraft to get or stay airborne. And we refer to all those words I just said as CRJ standard. So that's all I'm going to say in the takeoff briefing as we're taxiing out. CRJ standard for the abort, but that's what that means. All right, so after we take off, we'll call for speed mode, nav mode, autopilot on at 600 feet since it's a an RNAV departure, basically off the ground. So off of runway one left, we climb initial on a heading of 014. So let's get that set really quickly. Let's make sure that 014 is set in the heading bug because initially the autopilot is going to more than likely follow what where the heading bug is until it captures the uh, white needles RNAV. And so let's go back here and take a look. And we get, this is really important that we uh, verify these legs, especially since I just put a bunch of uh, kind of my own fixes in. And if I'm blocking the screen with the Navigraph charts, just let me know, guys. I'll try to I'm checking it right now, but it looks like it's clear. All right. So, first fix. I go to the truck in two. Uh, off runway one left, we climb that heading 014 to 520 feet, which we see there. Actually, let me put this in plan mode. Because if you go to format, just like in the Airbus, format and plan mode, and I usually take it down all the way to range, and we can see the fix easily shown here and I'm blocking you all so I'm just going to take off the Navigraph charts so you all can see that clearly and I'll read it out on my ends there we go so we're in plan mode now so first climb heading 0 and 4 to 520 then a right turn direct to tidy so hit this uh, arrow here it'll take us down to tidy then that's at or above 3,000 feet trucking Cosmic, Sarah, Roberts, and then direct to the Mammoth Lakes Airport. So that all matches. Then verify our distance in the FMS, and our sim brief total distance was uh, 216. So that's uh, that's close enough for um, the way this stuff works with all the planning, because they they planned all the approach fixes, which will likely be in there later. So that all looks good. Let me uh, take us back to the map mode there we go and so our clearance like we said we were squawking 7224 and that 10,000 set for that initial altitude the top altitude on this departure is flight level 19 or 0 so we'll keep that in mind but more than likely they'll clear our sun up to flight level tree tree 0 pretty quickly transition altitude is flight level 180 here in, out of San Francisco and departure frequency from our clearance. I always write that down on my scratch pad so I ha have it handy. Uh, is going to be 135.10. So, excellent. And we have some terrain in the area, some mountains that are just off to the uh, north and also to the east, but we should be heading out straight over the bay. If we lose an engine, we'll just head north up the bay and uh, work out the problem, come back to land here more than likely, or maybe even Oakland. All right. Do you all have any questions? If not, if you have some you think of later, please go ahead and ask. I know that's a lot, but um, I'm going to go ahead and run the before start check. Exterior inspections complete. Pressurization is set. Anti-ice is set. Hydraulics set. 
passenger signs on altimeters, two niner, niner three, cross checked, IRS, nav, anti skid, armed, thruster vert, armed, park and brake, and you always check this green advisor mentioned. That's what's really going to tell you if it's on. So park and brake is on. Radios and nav aids. I could go ahead and get that set. That'd probably be a good thing to do right now. So I'm going to go ahead and put ground as active, which is 121.8. And honestly, in the Aerosoft CRJ, it's easiest for me to just type in the number here. The real plane, you can spin, you can spin this knob so quickly and, and get a frequency in, but not, not in the sim. And then uh, tower is going to be 120.5. So let me get that standing by, so we don't have to be fiddling around with that when we're taxiing out. Okay, so radios and nav aids are set. Yaw dampers engaged. Don't see, and you have a yellow yet uh, YD enunciated on the PFD if the yaw damper is not engaged, in addition to a yellow caution or an amber caution message. So yaw dampers are engaged. Oxygen, we need to check that really quickly. So just hit this press to test knob, and that's checked 100%. Departure briefing complete. Four start check complete. And let's get everything disconnected from the aircraft really quickly. I'm going to try to use. Push back express today. Mc, McSimmon, no questions, all good here. Excellent. Glad to hear that. All right. So I'm going to disconnect the external power. Make sure they've disconnected all of that first. We don't want to rip any parts of the aircraft off. So that's off. Let's go ahead and pull the. I think they already pulled the jet bridge away. Excellent. The jet bridge is away. Let's. Raise the rare rails on the stairs, and then they close. Flight attendants will close the cabin door, which it is. Let me double check that it's showing closed there. Excellent. And I'll go ahead and see if I can call for our pushback. So it should use voice for me. Let me uh, let me uh, give that a try really quickly. I've only. I've used this pushback express one time and it was it was really cool. So um, flight deck to ground, we are ready for pushback and engine start. And I don't know if it's gonna work. Let me see if I can I'll try it one more time. I'm not gonna mess around with this too much on this uh, stream today. I think there was something that had happened with the uh, wheel chocks keeping it from working. Flight deck to ground. We're ready for pushback. Go ahead, flight deck. We're ready for pushback and engine start. <laughs> I don't know if you heard me there. Let me try this again. We are ready for pushback and engine start. Roger. Release the parking brakes, please. Okay, very cool. There it, wor it worked. So I'm going to go ahead and release the parking brakes. Let's get the beacon on. Engine start check. Your pumps and gravity cross flow on. And nozzle steering is off. So let's do the engine start check really quickly. And we saw that the doors were closed when we checked the door page earlier. FMSA cars set fuel quantity 5,690 planned. 5,680 on board. Our main fuel for takeoff is 5,190, so we're still good. Beacons on. Nozzle steering off. Fuel pumps on. Doors closed. Transponder, that needs to come on. And flight tech door, it's locked. And I'm going to go ahead and turn this to locked also. And to start check complete. All right, so hopefully they're going to connect. If not, I'm just going to. Yeah, I'm not sure what's going on with it. We're just going to do it manually. So I'm going to close out Pushback Express. I'll keep messing around with that. Maybe I can get it to work one of these days. And here we go. And I can see we're clear behind us. We just got to make sure we don't push onto an active taxiway, which it looks like Looks like we might, so I probably I might want to call 
ground here. San Francisco ground. Scott was 59.76 at Foxtrot 21. Like to push onto Alpha. Scott 59.76. Push onto Alpha. Approved. Uh, facing north and calmer to taxi. All right, we'll push on to Alpha, and I think we'll we'll have to be facing south when we do. We'll call you for taxi. This guy's 59.76. Yeah, I'm not able to. So you need to face south. Yeah, we're we're just gonna be pushing straight back. Um, I'm in Microsoft Flight Simulator, so I'm not able to do fancy turns. Roger. All right. Yep. And it's pushing back really slow. We have the chocks removed. What is causing... Oh, I know what it is. It's my Honeycomb Bravo parking brake switch. Yep, that was still on. So good. Now we're rolling. Yep, better safe than sorry with that uh, pushing back. All right, let's go ahead and start two, then one. So hold down and start two for two seconds on the right side. And two. Oil pressure. N1, ITT, and we're just waiting on 20% N2. And there it is. Hit the red tab and move it up. And fuel flow. It takes it a second to light up. And light up. I'm going to stop our push right here. It's close enough. All right. Let's set our parking brake. All right, guys. Thanks for the great push. You all have a great evening. All right, so good start there on two. Let's start one. And I forgot to start the timer on two, but we'll definitely start it here for one. I always want to start a timer when you're starting an engine. All right, and two. Oil pressure. And one ITT is below 120C, which is good. Just waiting on that 20% N2. All right, there it is. We'll hit the red tab. Pull the thrust lever up to idle. Fuel flow. And there's our light up. ITT's rising. Perfect. Let's check out the. Uh, yep, it's definitely fired up now. Excellent. All right, we'll, let, we'll go ahead and let these engines finish their start sequence. And you can see all the amber caution messages go away. So if you're flying the CRJ, you don't want any uh, amber caution messages typically when you're taxiing around on the ground with both engines running. So uh, if you see something, then something's usually wrong. Or you need to run a few more checklists to get something operating. Okay, so we're going to have a good start. Let's go ahead, flaps eight. That's what we're planning for takeoff. Watch your knees. We're going to check the flight controls really quickly. I'm going to bring the flight yoke back up here. It was out of the way to help us see some things. All right, so I'm going to go full forward, full left, full right, full left, and check the rudder also. Does this plane's livery remind you of Copa Airlines? Yes, I could totally, I could totally see that. That's a pretty li livery, um, definitely. See those leading edge devices that are out here on the seven or the 550 that are not on the 200. So that is a huge thing to have at the flaps one position. All right, so let's run the after start check really quickly. Let me just run through the flow up here. Turn off the APU and anti-ice is all good. Cargo air down to conditioned air, and we don't need any anti-ice today. And nozzle steering, we'll go ahead and arm that. I'm going to go over to performance because we'll check that here in just a second. So on the after start check, 
generators auto bleeds auto packs on cargo air conditioned air anti-ice set fuel pumps on flight controls checked rudder checked nozzle steering armed after start check complete and performance check so one last check before we get moving making sure we have everything programmed correctly runway one left and I'm going to verify the first fix here on my EFB on my actual desk. So it's runway one left and tidy. Runway one left tidy verified. Thrust full 87.3. Full 87.3 checked. Trims 5.7 and uh, centered. All of these trims are in the green. And 5.7 centered. And I'll just verify that one more time over here. Flaps 8 planned and 8 indicating. Speeds 124, 124, 136, 178, 146 in the bucket. And that's what we're showing in the PFD. Performance check complete. So we're ready to taxi. So I'll go ahead and I turn off this EFB just so we don't accidentally hit something we don't want to hit. All right. So we're clear left. We're clear right. San Francisco ground. Scott was 5976. Ready to taxi with Alpha. Scott, 5976, runway one left at uh, Mike 1, taxi Alpha, Mike 1. Runway one left, Mike 1, taxi Alpha, Mike 1. Skywest 5976. All right, here we go. Once again, we're clear left. And typically use this nose landing light and the recock taxi light on the CRJ. Let's see, Captain Mike, you might have to turn on anti-ice when descending onto Kilo Mike Mike Hotel. Yes, absolutely. We really might, depending on what the, uh, if they had any snow there, if there's some snow on the runway, we would. That would cause us to have to leave some anti-ice on or the clouds out there. So you can see there are a few clouds in the area. All right, so we'll, looks like our taxi is going to plan is going to be as briefed our clearance is as briefed according to our plan so we'll just continue clockwise on this inner taxiway alpha all the way around and through that hot spot up ahead but as long as we stay to the right we should be good all right Well, I know it's actually nighttime in San Francisco, but I've made it daytime just so we could see the beautiful scenery. Um, I have it set about four in the afternoon for us. But the scenery is just too nice to, to not enjoy. I have a scream in here at 20 knots. But that's all right. I'll get us, uh, get us rolling. I definitely have to say the default San Francisco is pretty cool here. It's cool how they have the SFO there on those tanks. That's that's really neat. And uh, nobody else really out flying tonight on Pilot Edge in the San Francisco area. I feel like Pilot Edge has almost all their traffic just down in Los Angeles. But the nice thing about Pilot Edge, the controllers are top notch and um, also, they're always going to be on at certain hours. But I'll likely do my next flight on Friday. Really, It'll be really late on Friday night, but it'll uh, likely be on Batsim. And hopefully I can find somewhere where there's some controllers online. All right, when we get, get under the straightaway, when we're through the hot spot area, I'm going to go ahead and do a quick takeoff briefing. I'm going to slow us down just a little bit. I typically don't want to go any faster than 25 knots. We're screaming, but that's all right. There's nobody here. So for our takeoff briefing, we're planning full rated thrust. That's at the blue the cyan numbers there. And uh, bleeds on the engine. Flaps are at eight. And we're taking off runway one left. First fix is going to be tidy at or above 3,000. Top out or initial out to 10,000 set. White needles. It'll be speed mode, nav mode standard CRJ abort and contentious ignition we'll have that on I'm gonna go ahead and turn that on now and if you all don't have any questions I'm gonna go ahead and do takeoff check to the line if you all have questions go ahead and ask them 
I'd be more than happy to we check our status messages and clear them there. Alright. And let me set our departure frequency. I'm going to go ahead and switch this over to tower and get departure frequency on uh, standby. I'm going to type it in the scratch pad down here because it would take forever to try to roll that in. So one, three, five, one, zero. You don't even have to put the decimal in here, which is nice. See, it does it automatically does it for you. That's the quickest way to do your frequencies in this CRJ. All right, so before takeoff, check to the line. Just have to flip my paper over here. Mike one's going to be this next left turn up here. Takeoff briefings complete. Cross flaw to override. Manual ignition on. Nav instruments are checked. That looks good. Fuel quantity 5,190 minute fuel. We have 5,515 on board and balanced. ICUS is checked and cleared. There that takeoff config OK green advisor message is always really important. That's part of checking the ICUS there. And brake temperatures are checked. Cabin is ready. Take off before takeoff check to the line complete. I see we're only one left on the pavement up ahead and on the signs. We'll give uh, tower a call. San Francisco Towers, Skywest 5976, holding short, one left. Skywest 5976, San Francisco Tower, runway one left, cleared for takeoff. The winds 29011. Cleared for takeoff, runway one left, Skywest 5976. All right, we'll turn all our lights on up here. One left, we're clear on uh, to the right on final. Runway looks clear to the left. All right, here we go. Before takeoff, check below the line. Takeoff configuration. Checked. Anti-ice standard N1 checked. External lights set. Before takeoff check complete. Clarence, hello. Welcome. Welcome, welcome, Clarence. Glad you are on tonight. Glad you could join us for this stream. And for those of you watching, my internet's been working fine today, but if it does happen to drop out, I'm just going to restart the stream, so check back later. And I do have this entire stream filming on my hard drive. Uh, but so far, I'm not anticipating any problems, but if there are any, just uh, check back a minute after we drop. So we're on the runway, hit the TOGA button, and if they'll bring the flight directors up. It updates the runway and the FMS, and we have takeoff for our vertical and our lateral modes. So here we go. Runway 1 left, heading 014 is verified. Let's roll. Set thrusts. Thrust set. B1, rotate. Positive rate, gear up. Speed mode, nav mode. Now we're above 600 feet, so autopilot on. Above 1,000 feet now, so we'll accelerate to 250 knots. Whoa, sometimes rolling those uh, mouse wheels causes some crazy stuff. All right, flaps one. Flaps up. Skies 5976, can I ignore departure? Skies 5976, good day. After takeoff check. So I'm going to do the after takeoff check before I contact departure. So we'll turn off the, put the cross flow auto override back to auto, ignitions off, climb thrust set, and turn off our thrust reversers, and check our status messages on ED2. They look normal. So for after takeoff, gears up, flap zero, cross flight over right auto, thrust climb, thrust reversers off, Ike is checked. After takeoff check complete. Norcal departure, Skywest 5976, 5900 climb via the truck and two. Skywest 
Delta 976, North Cut Departure Radar Contact, Climb and Tape Level 190. Climb and Tape Level 190, Skyway 5976. All right, I'm going to hold down the shift key again. That'll help us get this altitude selector up to 19 pretty quickly. Oh, let's see here. 19. All right. 19 set. So one trap, one threat I can see um, that's only 1,000 feet off from 2992. Thankfully, our altimeter setting is already at 2993. So we just have to make sure we go to our standard altimeter setting of 2992 at flyable 180. All right, Clarence, you're flying X-Plane, and Cap Cap no, no, me too. Yep, absolutely. I like X-Plane a lot too. I'm gonna I'm gonna get back to X-Plane here pretty soon. Let's take a peek at the beautiful scenery. Looks like uh, this Oakland we're flying over. Yeah, looks like it. Where the Raiders used to play, and the A's. All right, so we're above 10,000 feet. Walker, this thing is like a rocket. So I'll give the flight attendants the bells. They can start their service on this quick flight. And uh, wow, look, we're already at 13.2. We just crossed the bay. And this right here is an example of uh, why I love flying the CRJ 700 and this 550 is even lighter than the 700 so it climbs even faster right, let me roll the range out we always want to try to keep the next fix on our MFD so we know where we're another check of where we're going yeah that is it is incredible scenery isn't it Clarence <laughs> Captain Matt, hey, have you seen my weather report? No, no, no. Where's your weather report? Um, let me see if I can. Is it earlier in the chat, Captain Matt? I can try to um, pull it up. Looks like we're getting a little bit of turbulence here. So if you're getting some turbulence in the CRJ, if you really start getting rocked around, you can hit this turbulence button in the autopilot. And what that does, it makes it where the autopilot is not as aggressive. At holding at altitude. 76, contact Oakland Center, 132.905. 132, Skyway 5976. 18 for 19, outs cap. We're back to standard on the altimeters. So 132.905, I believe is what he said. I had quite a bit going on there all at once. <clears throat> I'll put it in standby. That way, if I have the wrong frequency, I can go back and talk to him. So. Oakland Center, Sky was 59, 76, flight level 190. Sky was 76, Oakland Center, climb and tank level 330. Climb and tank flight level 330, Sky was 59, 76. Alright, we're going to go up to flight level 330 now. So I'll get it rolling up that way, and I'm going to go ahead and hit speed mode. You have to hold it down for a bit. There we go. And we'll roll it back to 290. I can see it just on the bottom left-hand corner. So there's 290 and level 330. And I'm going to verify that with the controller really quickly. I'm pretty sure that's what he cleared us to. Oakland Center, Sky 5976. Just want to verify we we're cleared to climb to flight level 330. Affirmative. Thank you. Yep, so I had a slight doubt in my mind because I forgot to roll it all the way up to 330. And one thing they'll teach you in the airlines and a flight deck, don't ever try to resolve a question about a clearance in the flight deck between the two pilots. If you have a question, just ask the controller and, uh, and make sure because it's really easy for people to think they heard something. Or maybe you have someone up there that doesn't want to, you know, you might have a newer pilot or somebody that doesn't want to, disagree with the captain so he just says yes captain whatever you said it's it's just better to go ahead and verify it with air traffic control <laughs> all right so we need to roll our range out again make sure we can see our next fix there's uh, sarah coming up in our magenta banana bar showing we're going to level off at flyable 330 just a little bit past sarah
All right, Captain Matt, I'm going to uh, I'm gonna look it up. Clarence, when you land, make Swiss 015. I will do my best. And believe it or not, Clarence, I had not seen Swiss 001's butter video until you mentioned it last Monday on my stream, and then I went and watched it. So he has quite the channel, I must say. A lot of interesting, interesting videos. All right, I'm going to find Captain Matt's weather report here. Looks like you said you might have to turn on Andy Ice when descending into Mammoth Springs. All right. So apparently there might be some icing down in that area, huh? Very cool. Vanch, hey, welcome aboard. Glad you're here. So glad you're here. Got part of the community riding along tonight, so it's always, always great to have you guys on board. And look, you can see the snow on the mountains out in the distance there. So just a beautiful flight here. Charles Johnson, hello to you also. Thanks for, thanks for riding along. Let's go to a quick view from the cabin in the back. This is looking up to the north through the Central Valley of California and down to the south now. So very cool. There's kind of an exterior looking view. And uh, another one, but wow, yeah, you can see just beautiful scenery here in Flight Sim. Captain Matt said it starts with KMMH. All right, I'm trying to find it here. Because I have the YouTube chat on my EFB oh let's see make sure you have flaps trim set only taxi with one yep absolutely let's see that one but yeah Captain Matt I do not see the the weather report unfortunately I don't know why it's not showing up on my my chat but I did see what you said about having to uh, use anti-ice all right 32 for 33 now outs cap and one thing I forgot to do at flight 180 was turn off our lights so we don't need a logo or wing inspection or any of the landing lights now so we got that now outs cap And let's let me check our so we're at top of climb now. Our fuel is showing 4,300 pounds, and we were planned to have. Oh, let's see here. 3,623. So we're about 700 pounds ahead of schedule. So plenty of fuel. Salt Lake Center, hello, Walker. Which is a good, good thing to have. Three five zero. Good evening. Bench, if you're Walker similar, you have more viewers in the last stream. Absolutely, yeah, that's that's a good thing. I'm so glad you all are here. And Mammoth is your kind of local air is kind of your local airport. All right. I'm gonna keep us at Mach 78 for our cruise speed today. So move the speed bucket right up there. And it looks like. They just, Aerosoft just came out with an update to the CRJ today. So I bought my CRJ on the Microsoft Marketplace. So I don't have the update available yet, but I heard they fixed some things with the thrust. Because I will say this, right now the thrust is kind of squirrely to set compared to the real plane. So I'm hoping it'll be maybe just a little bit easier. And uh, so I'm pulling the thrust back. Look at us. This plane will overspeed without even blinking an eyelash batting an eyelash. I mean, it is a highly powered jet aircraft, which is part of what makes it so much fun to fly. So I'm trying to kind of ease the thrust levers back here. I'm going to sink our heading bug. Now we need to go ahead and get the weather for Mammoth. So I'm going to use an app that I have on my iPhone called, it's, uh, well, I'm going to pull it up here, Aero Weather. So yay, let's see. Captain Matt, please look above. I'm trying to 
try I'm trying Matt, uh, Captain Matt let me see I do not know why it's not showing your your message I really do apologize I saw you say you might have to use an oh there it is I found it Captain Matt Wind 15 knots, snow 2 feet 1 inches. <laughs> yeah. 9976, contact Oakland Center, 127.45. 2745, Skies 5976. 12745 is set. Need to pull our thrust back a little bit more. Oakland Center, good evening. Evening, Scott's 5976, five will treat tree zero. Scott's 5976, Oakland Center, Roger. It Captain Oatmeal, minus five points for iPhone. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not always happy with the iPhone, that's for sure. But so about two foot, one inch snow banks at uh, Mammoth Hot Springs. Wow, well, hopefully, hopefully Flight Sim got the runway cleared. I will say one cool thing about X-Plane, if you have X-Enviro, they will show the snow all over the ground. I'm not sure if X -plane, if uh, Flight Sim is going to show it. They definitely show the snow on the mountains, though, so that's a good start. But we'll have to see if uh, they're showing any snow on the... Scott's 5976, send maintain for level 240. Send maintain for level 240, Scott's 5976. All right, so let's send in for level 240. I'm going to start us down at 1,000 feet per minute. And then I'm going to do a quick calculation here. All right, there's 24 set. Here we go. And let me try this again. There we go. Sometimes it's kind of hard to set the vertical modes of the autopilot. You have to hold it down. All right, so I'll start our descent here. And let's go ahead and get our landing data set first and then I'll brief the approach. I think it's going to be the RNAV to we'll check the weather here. KMMH Mammoth Lakes Yosemite winds are 2705 10 miles clear 5 degrees minus 6 for the dew point and 3002 for the altimeter. So likely the RNAV to run away two sevens what I'm going to shoot just so we can practice some more of those RNAV procedures in the CRJ and flight sim. Alright so the airport was at 7,100 feet we want to be at oh I'd say 17,000 feet from Mammoth Hot Springs 30 miles out from the airport. So this is on the fixed page. I put the reference point, the distance we want to cross, and look, it draws a nice little uh, ring there for us. So we have to lose quite a bit of altitude. I'm going to start our uh, descent just a little bit faster for us here. I'll explain it in a second. But um, So if you take the Thousands of air, thousands of feet you need to lose and multiply it by three. That'll tell you how many miles you need to descend at a three degree descent rate. And how you get that descent rate in feet per minute is you multiply your ground speed times five. That'll get you pretty close. It's not exact, but it's close enough. So we need to go to about 2,500 feet per minute, which I'm doing. And we still have uh, 13,000 feet to lose. So that's about 39 nautical miles. So you can see we're 40 miles out from that right now. So we should be pretty close. So we're going to keep this trajectory. Like Scott 5976, contact Oakland Center, 125.75. 2575, Scott 5976. All right, 12575. Oakland Center, Skywest 5976, level 288, descending 240. Scott 976, Oakland Center. The Mammoth Altimeter 3001, let me know the weather from Mammoth. What's your approach request? 3001, we do have the weather at Mammoth. We would like to fly the RNAV 27 approach nickel transition. Gotcha. Alright, so I'm going to load that in really quickly. RNAV 27, nickel transition. Let's just get that in the FMS. So we're still going to Roberts, which is good. Then we have the airport. 
And then uh, on the approach, Nickel, Ever, JSAT, Feebat, we're only 2-7, missed out to Tepri, Ever, Nickel for the hold. That all looks good for right now. We'll verify it in just a minute with a proper approach briefing. And let's get our speed set really quickly. Refs, v ref is going to be 127. Set the center of the knob, so 127. V2 is going to be 135. Yeah, 69, uh, 76, clear track nickel, and descend to maintain 16,000. I have your approach clearance to go closer. Direct nickel, descend 16,000, Skywest 5976. There's nickel, direct nickel, and we're going down to 16,000 now. Sixteen thousand set. All right, and I'm going to go ahead and set the speed back to 250 knots, so we have a target that we're trying to slow to, especially when we level off. It'll be something to catch our eyes, so we don't get too slow or stay going or stay too fast. So there's 250 knots. All right, so like I said, speeds. Uh, we had 127. It won't let me. Usually in the plane you could get V1 to go away but we have uh, 127 for VREF 135 for VT and then or V2 and VT is going to be 187 whoops there we go 187 is set all right so speeds are set look at those mountains out there Cat Moatmill, do I take flight requests? Absolutely, I take flight requests. If you all have any flight requests, please let me know. I'm always looking for great ideas. Always looking for great ideas. Captain Falcone, what software are you using for the flight overway? It's called uh, Fly Live, and it's free. I'll try to smooth the baby again, Captain Matt. You got it. You got it. All right. So for our approach brief, let's do that really quickly. I'm going to pull up the Navigraph charts once again. And we're looking at the RNAV GPS 27, Mammoth Yosemite, 26 July 19, 12-1, RNAV runway 27. Follow approach course is going to be 259. Minimum altitude at FEBAT is going to be 9100. That's our final approach fix we'll have there. And the LNAV MDA is 8380. We need to set... 84.30 in the window. I'll explain that a little bit later. Let me go ahead and do that because that's going to take a little while. We're getting a little bit of turbulence, so I'm going to turn on the continuous ignition. I'm actually going to slow us down. We need to be 280 knots or 0.75 Mach, whichever is lower. So let me reduce our vertical speed just a bit here. And this cyan donut on the vertical speed when you have VNAV enabled, that'll show you the vertical speed that'll keep this that'll allow you to keep this white VNAV snowflake centered. So that's a neat thing. But this advisory VNAV is advisory only. It's not like a glide slope. It's honestly not even always all that accurate here in uh, the Aerosoft CRJ. All right, there's our turbulence penetration speed of 280 knots. So I'm going to try to maintain that if I can. 976, cross nickel out of 15,300, cleared RNAV runway 27 approach, and report uh, JSAT inbound. Cross nickel out of 15,300, cleared RNAV 27, report JSAT inbound. Skywest 5976. All right. Uh, Center, welcome 306, sorry for the delay, we're back in the seat. So 3002 in the the altimeter, and we'll go ahead and get our lights turned on as part of our Scent flow and we'll clear for the approach. And I'm going to go ahead and back to uh, flight idle. Captain Oatmeal, I'm a j junior, so there are a lot of us running around. <laughs> We're talking about your name. Boeing or Bombardier? I like Bombardier, but I also like Boeing uh, Clarence. And Captain Matt, you suggest Mammoth Springs to Las Vegas. Okay, I like that. I like that. I might just do that on the next flight. I'll uh, mark that down. 
So we got to remember to report JSAT inbound. That's kind of a something that could be a problem. So what I'm going to do to help us remember that, I'm going to delete this fix here since we're already at Mammoth Hot Springs. And I'm going to put JSAT in there. It'll put a nice little ring around it. I'm just going to say a five mile and it'll circle it so we remember to report when we're there. All right, so we'll level off here at 15.3. And it is windy. Look at us bouncing around here. I'm going to try to get our MDA set. It's going to take me a while rolling this up. Typically, you know, this is when a first officer is nice. So we could have the first officer flying the plane. I could be setting the approach up or, or vice versa. Especially on these short flights, it's nice to have a crew. So we're going up to 94.30. We have a long way to go to get that MDA window up. Let's try to set our thrust. And no auto throttle in the CRJ, so... There we go. Yeah, and the Airbus A320 or the A319 is be a cinch, right? You just you just dial in your MDA on the on the Mech 2. <laughs> no rolling knobs. And then once we're at uh, nickel, I'm going to try to slow us back to uh, 200 knots. Clarence, can you fly from Sacramento Executive to SFO? I could do that. Yes, that would be fun. All right, let me keep this MDA window going up. So what did I say? Uh, 84, 30? All right, 84.30 is set for the LNAV minimums there. All right, let's continue our briefing really quickly. So I'm going to finish this. The reason I did that is it's going to be a, a, a DDA, Derived Decision Altitude, because we're going to start a, a descent out here maybe and uh, keep a constant rate of descent. I don't. It doesn't always work well with the advisory VNAV here in the... Uh, simulator but I'll give it a try. So airport elevation is 7,135. We had 7,140 set in our pressurization window. Important thing there, right? And MSA, minimum safe altitude is 15,500 feet around runway 27 because we have a highest obstacle mountain 14,246 feet out to the east. So we need to keep that in mind. We're coming in from the north up here at Nickel and nickel at or above, nickel to Ever at or above 13,000. Ever to JSAT are above 11. JSAT to Feebat, we can go down to 9,100 feet. And then uh, Feebat to our uh, DDA, which is going to drive to decision altitude, which will be 8430, so 50 feet above that LNAV minimum. And ground speed not, we're probably going to have to have about eight to 900 feet per minute. High altitude high, means higher ground speed. And it'll be an offset approach. You can see there will be at a little bit of an angle to the runway. Rail, Pappy on the left. And after we land on 2-7, right hand turn off at the end, Alpha 5, and Alpha back into the ramp. If we go missed, need to verify this on the sim really quick, in the FMS really quickly. It's going to be uh, Tepre. Or actually, it's going to be a climbing right turn to 13,000 direct separate and via 044 track to Ever and via 322 to nickel and hold. So we go all the way back out to nickel. Right turn all the way around then back up to nickel. And we'd come back and try it again maybe. So that's all I have. Let's go ahead and do our descent and uh, or actually the arrival check they call it now. Altimeters 3002 cross check. Landing data set Pressurization checked. Passenger signs on. External lights set. Arrival briefing complete. Arrival check complete. And I'll start slowing us back here in a bit, but 
I don't want us to be crawling around out here too slow. We will have to make sure we're fully configured um, by the time we're two miles out from Feebat, the final approach fix. That's our target. All right. Captain Matt, Las Vegas to Raleigh, Durham. That would be a fun flight. I might try that in the next plane and uh, do that in the uh, one of the Airbus aircraft. That could be fun. All right, so we can go down to 13,000 now. I need to go ahead and get us going down there. So here we go. Now I'm actually going to slow us back. Let's see if I can get this to... Oh. And I'll just dial it onto the descent there, that cyan dot. Fox 3 8 across, jam and maintain 1 6 thousand. Salt Lake City, altimeter 3004. And I'm going to start slowing us back Fox to 200 knots. Salt Lake City, altimeter 3004. And we'll pull out some flight spoilers really quickly. And you can see when you've deployed the flight spoilers, you get this green advisory message, flight spoilers deployed, and it should show up on the flight control page too. Let's see if it does. Yep, look at that. Very cool. I've actually never gotten to deploy the flight spoilers yet in flight. So let's go flaps one. Let's blow 230 knots. Help get us get a little more drag. Going into a high altitude airport, it's important for us to manage our energy. Cap Moatmill, your request would be Syracuse to the Washington River Visual or Washington to Portland Main Harbor Visual. Yes, those are excellent suggestions. So I'm gonna have to write I'm gonna go back through the chat and write all these down. This would all be extremely fun. All right, so we're at 13,000, so when we get outs cap, I'm going to go ahead and set 11,000 in. So now I said I was hoping to do more of a constant angle, non-precision approach, but we're going to do some dive and drive here down to each altitude. <laughs> I think at once we level at 11, I'll put our missed approach altitude to 13, and then we'll do that constant angle approach. Let me get. Walk for 80 second. 12280, the common traffic advisory frequency up on Com 2 so we can monitor it. Scott, it's 976. You can skip the call. No traffic groups in you and Mammoth. Report your IF for cancellation, Mr. Approach. In the air, this frequency on the ground within five minutes after landing on 12.2. Change to advisory frequency is approved. Change to advisory approval. We'll report on the ground 1222. Scott, it's 5976. All right. So we can switch over to advisory now. All right, we can go on down to 11,000 feet. Hold down that vertical speed mode. Let me try it again. I'm hoping they'll fix that in the next patch. Let's go flaps eight. You can see, if you came screaming in here at 250 knots or more, you'd never get down. So now I'm gonna set uh, 13,000. And then it outs capped it, so let me see if I can get this to. There we go. We're far enough below it now to where it'll keep going down. And we'll just try to. Go flaps 20. Try to be fully configured by two miles out from the final approach fix of Feebat. And we have the terminal sensitivity for the GPS. That's important. And I think one bug they're working out is getting that within two miles of the final approach fix, it changes to a GPS approach sensitivity, which means full deflection of this needle is uh, 0.3 nautical miles. So highly sensitive, highly accurate. All right, let me reduce our vertical speed a bit. We have to be at or above 9,100 at Terpy. Yeah, the scenery is out of it. I agree. This is a really fun flight, guys, if y'all hadn't uh, gotten to do it yet. All right, I think we're probably at five miles, so I'm going to roll the range down. 
Nice thing, you can either look at your distance, which we're at, so gear down, flaps 30, arm the thrust reversers, and roll our speed back to a target of 160 knots. You might be able to hear my dog barking in the background. She's angry at something out the window. She's hanging out in the cabin today. She's a boxador, a boxer lab mix. <laughs> Have you ever, Captain Matt, have you ever flown to a place and your plane ran out of fuel? No, I have not. I have in Flight Simulator long ago, but not in real, not in the real world, thankfully. That would be uh, pretty scary. If you're flying for an airline, you'd probably be out of a job. More than likely. Let's take a quick look outside. So it looks like they didn't really model all the snow here on the ground, so sorry about that. Captain Matt, I appreciate your weather report, but looking like we're not going to get to see the cool snow drifts. All right, so we're two miles from Feebat, our final approach fix. We'll go flaps 45, and we'll put the speed bug on our VRF plus 5. And landing check. Gear down, down, flaps 45, 45, thrust reversers armed. Let me check complete, and I'm going to go ahead and box the status messages. All right. And you can see this uh, VNAV, advisory VNAV snowflake has kept us right on track. So we're going to cross VBAT at 9,800. No problem uh, meeting that altitude restriction. So that's kind of how you do this. There's an option on the EFB to get VNAV, but... Uh, I might use that on a future stream. All right, so I have the runway in sight now. It's out there. You can see we're at a little bit of an angle to the runway. Uh, Cap Matt, well, it's better to be prepared for it. Yes, it is. Absolutely. I agree with you. And let me turn off the EFB just so we don't... I actually had... I was clicking something in the cockpit and it actually killed the uh, engines. It looks like we're going down a little bit fast. I'm going to change us to about oh, 0800 feet per minute. And we're about 5 knots slow. I'm disconnecting the autopilot now. So look at this. This is where your um, your MDA or your DDA in our case would be. You'd be up this high and about this far away from the runway. So. Pretty incredible. All right, autopilot's off. Hit this disconnect bar back up. I'm going to turn off the flight director, clear that out, and we'll do raw data in. And I got to make sure I don't descend us too fast. Usually above a thousand feet per minute, it'll start barking at you for sync rate, which it's really easy to do at a high altitude. Because look, our ground speed is 140 knots. So we're moving pretty quickly. So Captain Oatmeal, I just learned how to do RMP approach in the Airbus. Think you could give us a trip doing RMP in this area? Yeah, that would be fun. I'd love to. So there's 1,000 instruments cross-checked. Gear check down. We're clear to land and we're stable. It's Mammoth Lakes traffic, Skywest 5976, CRJ 550, short final runway 27. Mammoth Lakes. It looks like we have a bit of a right quartering headwind. It's a pretty narrow runway too. So I'll try to do this guys as best I can. One dot low flying up. Reducing vertical speed. 50, 40, 30, 20. All right, spoilers are green. Advisory message there. There's our reversers. 90 knots. So we'll go back to reverse idle. Coming up on the brakes. 
The other one's into the winds to the right. And we'll just take it to the end here and exit to the right. Butter, thanks. <laughs> thanks, guys. <laughs> Thank you, Clarence. All right. And once we're clear of the runway, we'll do the after landing flow. The baby was smooth. <laughs> Thanks, Captain Matt. I appreciate that. All right, so this is a pretty narrow turnoff. I flew here in the Airbus A321 on X-Plane 11, the Tolis. And wow, let me tell you, these turns were tight in an A321. All right. Got to get a little extra. So at these high altitude airports, too, um, a lot in real life, you'll notice you need to have a little extra thrust in order to get moving because the air's thinner. And your brakes also will get hotter, too, because you're going at a higher ground speed. All right, so we're clear of the runway now. I'm going to make our radio call. Manflex traffic, Skywest 5976, clear only 27, taxing to the terminal via Alpha. Manflex flaps up. After landing flow. And then we'll need to make sure that we cancel our flight plan. Traffic case ignition, turn off the windshield heat, probe heats. Start up the APU. Make sure the radars are off, which they don't even work yet, but I'm sure they'll get those working. That'll be really cool when they get those working. And we need to go to 122.2. So let me put that in. Oakland Center, Skies 5976 on the ground. Mammoth Lakes like to cancel IFR. Skies 5976, IFR cancellation received. Oh, good night. All right, there we go. Cancellation is received. And with that two minute limit, I thought I'd, I, I think I forgot to hit the chronometer, but uh, we have about, oh, I'd say another minute left on that two minute cool down period before we can shut the engines down. So I'm gonna slow our taxi just a smidge. Grease smoothed activated, Captain Well, thank you. <laughs> Charles Johnson, that was a touch of silk landing. I appreciate it. And uh, silk, hi, I'm Visa, all right. Well, welcome, welcome to the flight, Sok. And uh, yeah, so in X Plane 11, someone created some uh, a custom airport scenery for it, which is really cool looking. Uh, and uh, this would be a great airport for somebody to touch up in Flight Sim 2020. Honestly, it, it's not bad with the default scenery, but. It's just, this is a fun place to fly. I'm going to park us all the way over here. And I think I'll pull us on the other side of the fuel truck. And we'll definitely have our two minutes of uh, letting the engines cool down before shut down at that point. Letting them stabilize. Alright, here we come. And hopefully my uh, drone will work today after... We shut the airplane down, and I'll show you all around the airport a little bit. In my last stream, the drone just stopped working for some reason, and we went to Key West, which that would have been a cool spot to check out some of the sites. All right, we'll stop it right here, because this is the terminal building. All right, so first thing, park and brake, get that set, which it is. We have our two minutes on the engine now. Let's go ahead and kill the engines here. So let's shut down two. Make sure the APU is running. Yep, it is. All right, here goes the other generator. Engine one's down. And we'll turn beacon off, come up through here, turn off our boost pumps. APU is operating. I'll turn off the seatbelt sign so everybody can start getting up. Let's go ahead and open the, uh, turn off the Landing lights, recog taxi lights, and let's open up the cabin door so everybody can get off this aircraft. Nozzle steering can come off now too. 
There we go. Get the wheel chocks in place. Go ahead and get a ground cart connected. And we'll continue down here. Check the hydraulic quantities. They're all in the green. Okay, good. So we can turn off the hydraulic pumps now. And we already have our anti-ice all set up. It's all off. Yep. And seatbelts off. Come down here and let's run our parking check. Parking brake is on. Transponder, I forgot to do that. It's on standby now. Good. Radar off, flaps zero. Seatbelts off, anti ice off. Electrical, check the synoptic page, make sure everything's powered. Yep, it is. Fuel check valve not required. Thrust levers shut off, fuel pumps off, ignition off. Hydraulic checked off.